Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to get this rotated to where the one of these cylinders index has their cams pointed directly away from um, directly away from the buckets. Okay. So you want to always rotate this uh, clockwise, like going forward. A um, couple of reasons for that. One, um, you don't want your, your tensioner is only your cam chain tensioner is only meant to work in one direction, uh, so you can potentially put it out of place uh, if you rotate it backwards. Um, and the second reason is you don't, don't want to inadvertently uh, loosen the bolt at the end of your crank because that would be pretty bad. Uh, you need to get deep into the guts of the engine to get it taut back up. Okay. This is making me a little bit nervous so I'm gonna grab a zip tie or something and pull all this out of the way. Don't want any of that getting jammed in the gears and stuff. So it looks like the left cylinder is going to come uh, into position first. Um, I should probably have pulled the spark plugs out. Um, yeah, it's fine. I'm just feeling a little bit of compression. That's right about exactly where we want it. Uh, this also gives us a nice chance to take a close look at the camshafts and see, uh, sorry, at the cam lobes and see if we are seeing any premature wear or scoring or anything like that. But these cams look like they're basically in perfect condition. Yeah, no issues there. They look beautiful, which is wonderful news. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. So you see the peaks of these lobes, uh, they're pointed basically directly away from the buckets at the bottom. So this is, the buckets are essentially on the base circle of the cam. Uh, so now I'm going to try and get my feeler gauges in between uh, the cam and the bucket and measure the clearance. So, I think the uh, feeler gauges I have right now um, don't really have enough resolution. So I'm going to get a new set of feeler gauges, but uh, for right this second, at least I'll get a basic idea. So. Um, the clearance for the intake valves is supposed to be between 0.1 and 0.15. So I have a 0.127 millimeter and a 0.152 millimeter. So at least I'll know uh, if it's wildly out of spec. Um, but I do need to order a new set of filler gauges um, to get um, to get an accurate measurement. So that feels a little bit tight. So even at point one two seven, uh, see what? Uh, so the point one five won't go in. So it's definitely uh, tighter than point one five two. Uh, probably close to point one two seven. It I feel just a little bit more resistance than I should be feeling. Uh, but yeah, 
Let me check the other one. Oh boy. Yeah, this one even fit a point one to seven, so this is probably going to be uh, too tight. So I'm gonna need to change the shim on this guy. Okay, so now these guys are in position. Let's see, point one to seven. This feels good, so I think this guy we can safely say is uh, has the right clearance. Yep, same with this guy. So looks like the front right cylinder intakes are fine. Um, so front left cylinder is definitely going to. Going to need an adjustment. Uh, exhaust cams are going to be a little bit more challenging to measure. And the spec is different on the exhaust cams as well. It's a larger spec because um, the exhaust cams get harder. Anyway. Um, so I just want to take a quick measurement today. Um, but I'm going to come back and uh, get a new set of feeler gauges with more resolution uh, in the measurement range that we need uh, and take a proper measurement and that would be uh, in the future. Now I think it will make my life significantly easier uh, if I was to take this evap canister out and get these evap lines out of the way i mean yeah leave the evap canister where it is but disconnect the lines from this end and get these like up and out of the way over here um, because putting on and taking off the valve cover with those in place uh, is going to be really painful So I need to remember that these hoses go under the wiring harness through as a little yeah, let me bring you in so it goes under this wiring harness here right next to where the valve cover and the head meet and then it comes through this retaining clip thing over here and then onto here uh, so I honestly don't think taking this trim panel off helped at all uh, so I'm just going to put it back. So I knew I had a set of slip gauges but what I did not realize was in the range that is required I did not have enough um, enough resolution. So I've done valve clearances on a car before but not on a motorcycle. This is actually decent practice for when we are actually putting the valve covers back on because at that point we will have uh, three bond or uh, I'll probably use some other kind of FIPG I don't know uh, one of those 
I have some Toyota FIPG, which I really like. Uh, so FIPG is uh, farm in place gasket. So it's a technical term for um, RTV silicone, basically. Anyway, uh, so I'll probably use some of that since what he <laughs> used from the factory uh, clearly it's not that great if it's leaking at 12,000 miles uh, okay maybe I'm gonna pull these spark plugs out and take a look at them really quick this is a spark plug socket I don't know if you can see very well in there but it has a little uh, rubber insert so it holds the spark plug uh, in the socket while you either pull it out or put it in okay. and the reason that holding the spark plug in the socket is important is it's very easy to drop your spark plug down this tube and then <coughs> have the electrode bump off against the sides uh, at the bottom of the tube like hit the edges instead of going into the spark plug hole and then changing your uh, spark plug gap which is a very very vital uh, measurement obviously um, it can easily lead to like random misfires like not burning well like all that kind of stuff uh, and it's just from people dropping spark plugs down the hole without like using a proper spark plug socket Just like that. Okay. Now, this spark plug. Actually, it looks really good. Um, the tan line that you can see on the strap here uh, is about halfway down uh, which tells me that it's burning in the correct temperature and the correct air fuel ratio uh, there isn't any wetness on the plug there's no carbon deposits uh, this engine is running combusting really really well uh, no issues there good stuff Very similar story with this one. Looks really good. Although there is some nastiness here and some wetness. Uh, 
tells me some water has gotten in to the spark plug hole. Uh, it's a little bit of corrosion there. Not the biggest deal. Um, probably put some dielectric grease on the boots before we put it back in. Try and make sure it's watertight. Pretty good. As usual, don't leave anything open on your engine. So we're gonna just stuff some blue towel down there. Make sure no random nonsense gets in. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is put some tape on these throttle bodies. I'm not, yeah, not happy with how they're sealing there. Anyway, so this should keep all the random nonsense out of the engine while we work on other stuff um, as you can see there's quite a bit of dirt debris all sorts of stuff just from regular riding uh, totally to be expected but it's much better to not get any of that inside your engine obviously Closer towards reassembly, we'll, uh, we'll clean the intake ports out nice and neat. But for now, uh, since we're going to be messing around this area quite a bit, I like this better. Probably should have done this right at the beginning, but better late than never. I feel a lot better about that. Okay. I'll probably pick this up when I have my slip cages and stuff.